Amen. Amen. We are reading from the Old Testament today. We are still in the second book of the Bible, Exodus, chapter 14, verses 19 through 31. The angel of God who was going before the Israelites army moved and went behind them and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses and chariots and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at the dawn the sea returned to its normal Death. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters turned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. The Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. May the Lord add a reading, I mean, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's word. Are you all with me this morning? Yes. Ah, <laughs> sound. <laughs> Reminds me on when God was creating the earth. Today for a sermonic theme, I'd like to use move out day, move out day. So we have Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts here, and one of our Boy Scouts leader, Jeff Edstrom, has two kids. This year in his family, his oldest son and his firstborn was taken to Mississippi, Mississippi State University. It appears that in their family heritage, people have gone to Mississippi State University. So they're not just excited that their son is going to college, but he's continuing this tradition of going to Mississippi State University. So when they got there, they had to go through a series of health screen tests and one wrong answer could get them sent back home. But fortunately, they were able to answer all the questions the right way and they were able to help their son unpack and help him set up. Across the United States of America, parents are taking their kids back to colleges some are doing the viral thing. Some are going to colleges and doing the partly viral and the partly in class. And we continue to be challenged in the way we experience a new normal. But kids are going to school. Kids are going to college. And many are going to college 
for their very first time. Jeff responded when someone asked him, how does your house feel now that your son has moved out, now that he's in college? And his response was, well, the same amount of dishes gets done when he was here and now that he's gone. One of my other colleagues, they took their daughter down to Xavier in New Orleans and they unpacked her and settled her and got her ready and headed back home and mom and dad were cool until their first meal at their home. And then mom broke down when the, there was one less placemat at the table. And it dawned on her that her baby girl was now in college. But this happens, move out day. In fact, as I've come to know many of you here at United, some of you came to this church because of your own move out day. You re relocated here to attend college, or you moved here for a new job, or you moved from your parents' house to get married, or it was just that time. But most of us at some point, there are some exceptions, but at some point most of us leave what is known as home. We move out because it is part of our own growth journey to do so. We move out because it is time to explore the bigger world. We move out to grow, to spread our wings, to fly. We move out because to stay would stagnate our growth. We move out because God calls us to deeper waters. We move out because we feel the hand of the Lord on our lives. Today, we arrive at the exact moment in the biblical text where it is move out day for the Israelites. They have been living in terrible conditions. It did not begin that way, but it usually never does. Things begin kind of sweet. But over time, their stay in Egypt had moved from being friendly and welcoming to actually downright violent. Pharaoh did not like them, and there are several scholars that give different reasons as to why Pharaoh did not like the Israelites, but it's clear that Pharaoh did not like the Israelites. And so you have this tension that is growing between the Egyptians and the Israelites. Us against them. And as much as they tried to work with Pharaoh, Pharaoh was just not budging. He wanted to treat them terrible, but he didn't want to see them go either because they were his bread and butter. And so God led Moses through negotiations to have a conversation with Pharaoh, and Pharaoh didn't want to negotiate. And Moses pleaded with Pharaoh and talked until Moses was blue in the face and try to make the best, this group of people, of a terrible situation. And then God declares, it is move out day. So let's just pause here for a moment to reflect on the big move out day. So on one of my social media formats, I posted a picture of what Forbes has listed as one of the top 10 most unusual restaurants in the world. It is located in Dubai and properly, popularly known as a dinner in the sky. While other restaurants promise you a skyline, they were not kidding when they said you actually get a dinner in the sky. Here in Dubai, at a dinner in the sky, you are suspended 50 meters high in the air. If any of you are challenged by the metric system, that's about 164 feet high in the air, high enough. So I post this picture of 24 people having dinner, and I ask, would you do it? Would you go on this dinner day? For $200 per person, you can see the sunset go down, and you can have fine dining culinary experience out of this world while you indulge unique scenery from a perspective you've probably never seen before. And can you imagine the responses that were given? Now, without a doubt, out of a couple of dozen responses, two people said yes. But mostly, the thought of eating up high in the air appears to be an adventure that is frightening. 
I imagine a few generations into a hostile relationship with the Egyptian ruler, babies being killed, bad work environment, no labor unions, and 10 plagues later that the thought of leaving Egypt was scary, like being suspended in air, being suspended in time by the thought of leaving against the wishes of a powerful ruler who will stop at nothing, just a little panic in the air. We know that love is powerful, but fear is too. Even in our own country, we can see how fear can tear people apart and bring division. Fear has made this country not the United States of America, but the divided states of America, with people digging their feet in. Even now, as our elections are getting closer, if you don't want your country to go to hell, you should vote this way. And both sides are doing a good job of painting the other side as this is what could happen to our country if you don't vote. This election is heralded as one of the most important elections of our time, and most of the platforms used are all about what could happen if the other side gets elected. One pastor is even calling for a national prayer because of fear of what could happen. Most of us are deeply concerned if we halfway even perceive what is going on. It is important that we vote, but fear is in the midst of how we are being called to vote. A while ago, I took a youth trip somewhere in Iowa, 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 a small town, and I watched as youth from the inner city and youth from a rural area engaged and had fun together. During our stay there, we went across this bridge that was suspended in air, basically by ropes and a piece of boards, boards slatted, and the youth, the teenagers, flew across the bridge. They ran with the bridge shaking. They were so excited. I took the more leisurely route and kind of just rolled across the bridge. On the other side, when it appeared that most of us were almost over, I looked back and noticed that there were two adults and one teenager. This one teenager was afraid to cross the bridge. It was clear that after several minutes of adults talking to her, that fear had gripped her heart. And the only question left was, how was she going to handle this situation? Sometimes fear leaves us at the bridge in our lives, but it helps to have a God that feels present in our time of need. It helps to know that we have a God that sits close, a God that is with us. It helps to know that in every situation we have a friend. It helps to know that our Creator wants our very best at all times and in every situation. Fear can come, but it doesn't have to be the deciding factor. Fear can be felt, but we can move beyond fear. Fear can sit us on the edge, but God knows our name and God calls us to God's self. Fear will visit us from time to time, but we have God to lean on and lean into. It's move out day. Man, if I could just color the excitement on these faces here. It is move out day. Today is the day that the Israelites are to move out, but not alone, not on their own. They have Moses, and more importantly, they have God. Pharaoh had said they could go, but then Pharaoh changed Pharaoh's mind. And so they're leaving, and they're being pursued, and they're trying to get free, and they're being pursued. And Frederick Douglass says that freedom doesn't come without a struggle. Disney Plus ain't got nothing on move out day. 
The suspense is building as the Israelites are trying to leave and they're being chased by the powerful Egyptian army. Moses stands with the people on the edge of the water. The angel and the pillar of cloud have moved from in front of the people to behind them, between the people and the army of Pharaoh. What happens next? shows the presence and the power of God. Moving out is about freedom. Moving out is about growing into the identity that God has for you. Moving and movement is a part of our spiritual journey. You shouldn't be the person you were 10 years ago. You shouldn't even be the person you were a year ago. A couple of weeks ago in the caregiver support group, we had a trainer present on arthritis and all the symptoms and what you can do to make it better. And one of the things they said is movement is like lubrication for the joints. Moving out is also important to our faith. It's important that we move. God is not done with you or us, nor was God done with the Israelites. In order for them to become the people that God wanted them to be, they had to, they had to move out. Let's talk about that fear again. I love the YMCA. Like the church, they foster a sense of community through activities that they have at their different locations throughout the city. They have all kinds of activities for all ages, and they're really good at teaching kids and adults how to swim. However, it's much more fun to watch them teach the teenagers and adults how to swim. Because teenagers and adults have now more of an ingrained fear than do little kids who simply are willing to just launch out. One day there I was observing their class, the class where they were teaching the teenagers and adults. And there was this one teen that started or appeared to look like he was drowning. He was so afraid, he was fighting the water, and you could see splashes coming in every direction. I mean, if you could get an award for beating the water, he would have gotten it. You would have thought that that was the Israelites in the Red Sea or something, but here he is fighting the water. This teen is so afraid that he's drowning. The instructor is on the sidelines, yelling to him, but the kid can't hear him. He continues to fight the water. He continues to allow his fear full reign over his body. Over and over again, the instructor is yelling to him, stand up, stand up. This why happened to only have five feet of water. Stand up. Fear can consume us. Fear can drown us. Fear can stop us. But so can faith. We can be led by the Spirit or we can perish in a state of panic. Nelson Mandela in his autobiography, The Long Walk to Freedom, says, I am fundamentally optimistic. Whether that comes from nature or nurture, I cannot say. Part of being optimistic is keeping one's head pointed toward the sun and one's feet moving forward. There are many dark moments when my faith in humanity was sorely tested, but I would not and could not give myself up to despair. That way led to death and defeat. It is always a good thing to move in our faith. It's move out day. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we really have come this far by faith, sometimes leaning on you. And if we keep it real honest, sometimes we didn't lean on you at all. But you have kept us just as you kept the Israelites. You have kept us, not just with our faith, but all of the fear that we're sometimes entangled in. Even when we're in five feet of water and fighting the water and perceiving ourselves to be drowning, 
God, you have been there. And you scream out, stand up. Stand up. Dear Lord, we are living in critical times where we can choose fear or we can choose our faith. And we can stand up and we can be counted and we can be led by you. Because you didn't bring us this far to leave us. And we have to be reminded that just as you were with our ancestors, you are with us today. Let us cling to our faith, let go of our fear. Let us cling and hold on to our faith and distance ourselves from our fear. Let us lean into you always to lead us through. Amen. <laughs>